Hey guys, what's up? It's Than from Tidal Gardens. One of the coolest things in the ocean is a symbiotic relationship between two organisms. The symbiotic relationship between a clownfish and an anemone is responsible for drawing in thousands of people into the hobby. Today, we'll be talking about the bubble tip anemone, which is arguably the most popular variety to host clowns in. Before we get too deep into our discussion, these clips came from my friend Jim's tank. His tank video is one of the most popular on this channel, so if you haven't seen it yet, you can take a look by clicking the annotation above. Bubble tip anemones are perhaps the most desirable anemone to host clownfish. They are more colorful than long tentacles and less predatory than carpets. They're also known to host a wide variety of clownfish, arguably more than any other in the hobby. On the topic of care requirements, bubble tip anemones benefit from lots of light. We have kept them under a variety of lighting conditions, but a slow acclimation to higher light seems to improve their overall health and color. As for flow, it's far better to give them plenty of flow rather than too little. Providing that flow, however, can be a challenge. Like all anemones, bubble tips can move around on their own. In fact, this variety moves around more than just about any other kind. They can race around a tank multiple times in a single day if they wanted. They may stay put for months at a time and then suddenly get the itch to race around again. The problem is that they often find ways to get stuck in pumps or get flushed down in overflow. Large anemones can easily fit through the slits in an overflow and get severely damaged as a result. Long story short, Bubble tips appreciate a good amount of flow, but it's wise to protect the input of pumps and overflows even if it means using foam that requires frequent cleaning. The ironic thing about bubble tip anemones is that they don't always have bubble tips. It's very common for healthy specimens to display long stringy tentacles instead of their namesake bulb-like tips. There's much speculation around what causes this difference in morphology, but there's no consensus. Bubble anemones are one of the most prolific anemones when it comes to propagation. The methods, however, vary tremendously. Some aquaculturists like to slice the anemones in half. Now, I personally have not had great success doing this. Other methods include periodic stress. For example, an occasional change in salinity or temperature can induce splitting. Many successful propagators attribute their good fortune to a feeding regimen including meaty foods like this silverside. Bubble tip anemones eat a variety of meaty foods and we try to give them a morsel every two to three days. Jim's tank seen earlier does nothing. All those anemones sprung from a single specimen a couple years ago. My question for you guys this week is, if you've had a lot of success propagating bubble tip anemones, what is your favorite technique? Post it in the comments below. It looks like he's all done, so we're all done. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please take a moment to subscribe, it really helps us out a lot. If you haven't already, take a look at our new revamped website, TitleGardens.com. Take care guys, and as always, happy reefing.